Tyrion has become so close to who I am. Where do I begin, my lords and ladies? I look up to him. Not when he kills somebody, but... <laughs> I think it happened early on with those scenes with Michelle Fairley outside, and we were on the road and we had all these horses, and just I got this warm, fuzzy feeling of being involved in something great, something I'm gonna be really proud of. When I signed up for the show, the books had been written at that point, so I knew going in this beautiful character arc that Tyrion had from this mess, for lack of a better word, at the beginning to finding his footing politically and up until the death of his father. Tyrion. It was such a great meal to jump into as an actor. Little brother, beloved siblings. In a very strange way, it's almost like the three Lannister siblings were all born in the wrong body. Jamie seemingly has it all, but he doesn't want it. Cersei happens to be a woman, which is not a strong thing to be. And so she's overlooked because of that. Little do we know how that changes. And then Tyrion is the most adept uh, politically and strategically, but because of his size and his proclivity for uh, the drink and the, you know, going to the brothels, and he just doesn't seem fit on paper to be a leader. You're a clever man. But you're not half as clever as you think you are. Mm. Still makes me more clever than you. You know, I get Tyrion yelled at me more than I get Peter yelled at me on the streets. <laughs> it's always disappointing when people think I am Tyrion. When they get into conversations with me, they're like, you're not as witty. This damn show has made my life is so great and ruined me in so many ways. A wise man once said that you should never believe a thing simply because you want to believe it. Which wise man said this? I don't remember. Are you trying to present your own statements as ancient wisdom? Never do that to you. When I first heard that they were interested in me for a fantasy show, I went, Ugh, no. There's been residual stuff with people who are dwarves and fantasy, and I'm not really interested in portraying a fantasy of a person. I'm an actor. I like to portray real people. And sometimes in the world of fantasy, that gets lost. But this was the opposite because of the relationships between these characters, because of who Tyrion is, how flesh and blood he is. It's the most realistic show that I've ever done that also happens to have dragons and dead people walking around in it. Next time I have an idea like that, punch me in the face. The greatest thing about Tyrion, for me, the actor, is I got to work with everybody, which is not true for all the characters. I cross-pollinated as a character quite a bit. There are thousands of them, and only one of you. You're here because of your mind. If we survive, I'll need it. Tyrion, he's just a really good person. He wants justice in the world. He wants to fight for people who don't have a voice. Will I really be able to ride? You will. Why do you want to help him? I have a tender spot in my heart for cripples, bastards, and broken things. It was very hard to say goodbye to play Tyrion. So with that, folks, it's a Game of Thrones wrap on Mr. Peter Dink. <laughs> this show would not exist without you. I know I speak on behalf of everyone here. They could not be more proud to call you our friend. Uh, likewise, you guys. Uh, thank you. Ooh. We love thank you. you. Thank you, guys. It's been a ride. You made me feel at home. I'm far from home, and this is now my home with all of you. So thank you. And I have a family here. To do something that you really love and that the public loves as well is very rare. This is a popular piece of art. Who, who knew that was possible? If you die, we're all lost. Everyone, everything. 
This show is uh, just one to be remembered. The histories won't mention you. But we will not forget.